Seeds of Gold is brought to you by Bukola Chemical Industries Limited. Research shows that rabbit farming is a very lucrative business worth investing into, simply because everything on it is usable and sellable. It's a profitable venture too because of its reproductive potential. Details coming up. Coming up on the program. Rabbits, as, as they are, have value in everything, in their manure, in their urine, in their skin, their fur, everything is, you can eat everything on the rabbits. With value addition, rabbit farming is the in thing to consider. Rabbit urine can be used as a fertilizer and a pesticide as it contains high levels of phosphorus, nitrates and potassium which is good for plant growth. The skin is used to make leather shoes, bags among others. Rabbits have very good meat and they too are often used in laboratories as specimens and the bones can be used to make animal feeds when crushed. Plus its fur is used in making clothes. There is so much to look out for in rabbit farming. Tonight on the show, we are in Kayabwe, Mpiji district, where we meet a 19-year-old that has discovered the gold in rabbit farming. Sharik is the future youth Ugandan needs. He is only 19 years and very focused. He is the founder of SN Breeders Limited and he ventures into breeding rabbits for meat and also focuses on value addition. This is how unique the farm is. I'm the one that founded this SN Breeders Limited. Um, we try to focus on integrating um, farm management systems and the old pen to paper are uh, inventory uh, in terms of rabbit breeding and um, uh, inventory finances and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we chose rabbit farming because I as a person I had a, um, an interest in rabbits since I was young. Uh, their general appearance, how they look like, very very lovable pets. Um, when I was a kid I remember we had about four rabbits at home but they were just for, for show. Um, it wasn't until when I turned about 15, when I actually did start to see the value in rabbits. Um, my first rabbit hatch was at my grandma's house, whereby I had about five rabbits, and five and ten rabbits. It was ten rabbits, five males, five females. Um, it was just a test. And within about three months, I had about 35 to 40. I can't keep track. But um, I just rabbit trip because I saw the potential in this venture, uh, the way these animals rapidly multiply. Um, one, one bunny can give you about six kids every month. You know, it's, it's all a numbers game. In about six months, you can count tremendous number of multiplications. This numbers do, you know, these, these numbers beat other types of ventures. Uh, beat goats, compared to goats, you get about, what, two, ki two, two, two kids in about six months. Probably three, you get six kids every month times six. Look at the numbers are different. So um, I chose rabbitry because it's, it's very profitable in terms of multiplication and also rabbits as, as they are have value in everything. So um, Ethan Breeders is on the same land as my father's um, chicken farm. My parents actually began a, a poultry business. I always had the idea of rabbitry, did some research about, uh, took a year doing some research, visiting farmers. Um, and then came down and sat down and concluded that rabbitry is indeed a venture I want, to, I want to pursue. But obviously, it wouldn't be without the help of my father and mother, without seeing them, you know, success in their, in their own venture. And my parents were able to actually give me some land, real estate, and I was able to start my rabbitry um, side by side with their chicken uh, project. In Uganda, most youth are unemployed and even those with land fear to start. 
because of capital and others just do not want to get their hands dirty. Sharik's thinking is the future we need in farming. With such new technologies, I hope a youth out there can pick a leaf and start to work. Think differently. My advice to the youth is always start small. You know, um, SN breeders began very small. We began about one cage, literally one cage. And right now we have about um, 15 to 20 cages in this single Hendrix. Um, so I would recommend start small. Um, and also a big thing to do is take risks. Um, without risk taking, I would have never been here. Um, don't fear, don't fear uh, taking risks. Um, we're still young. The one thing I've learned is we're still young. We have time to mess up. But I'm not saying go ahead and mess up, but mess up, make very, very calculated risks. Whereby if you, if you make a risk and you fall, you have time to call back and start again. Um, secondly, I'd, I'd, I'd uh, recommend um, having a team around you to support you in terms of family, maybe mentors. Um, I personally had my, my parents, my father, my mother, my brothers all mentor me. I saw my, my older brothers, my, older, my, my mother, my father, the all entrepreneurs, and I saw from them, believed in me. Of course, I did fall down a couple of times. The biggest, the biggest fall in this venture is in terms of finances. You reach points where these rabbits need to feed, not enough capital is coming in, you need some support in some, some kind of way. Um, there's, you know, there's having, you have, a, you have a number, you have a high number of rabbits today, tomorrow they die, you don't know what's, what's, what's causing them. You know, there's things like a bad management. Um, actually, about five months ago, I read a book. It was by Robert Kiyosaki. And this book, they talk about, it's called um, Rich Dad's Cash Flow Quadrant. And this book did show us how um, one can build a business. Um, and this book doesn't only talk about finances. It talks about how to mentally prepare yourself as an entrepreneur to build a business. And the very first thing that was highlighted in this book was building systems. At Essen Breeders, I'm, probably, I'm, I'm proud to announce that we have partnered with um, certain companies that produce rabbit tree uh, management softwares. And these are actually able to help us um, keep track of our finances, our breeders, our farm progress, all this kind of stuff. When we talk technology, this is what we mean. The integrated farm management system. Gone are the days when one needed big black books and pens to take stock. On this farm, that is history. Thanks to the new management software system that helps in breed selection as it follows the rabbit's history. Our farm does actually have a software we use that tracks every breeder as an individual. Um, at times I did, I did face, when I, when I began this venture, was that um, we had rabbits breeding, um, you breed a mother with a, with, a, with a brother, with a sister, a dad with a, with a, with a, with a, with a sister, and you wouldn't know really, um, you know, the genetic line. So with time, we slowly discover how to kind of um, counter attack these problems. And now that's, how, that's why we onboarded this software. And the reason I say we're different from other farmers in this country is because our farm, in about two to three months, our farm will be the only fully data-driven uh, rabbit trip in Africa. And we hope to keep that going for about the next two years or so and be able to help empower other farmers to also um, onboard this kind of farm management systems. We breed for, for one day. Um, we use our, our um, Everbreed system and we do actually put in the male and the female. We serve them and it actually does provide um, a ledger that shows us the time frame from um, putting the female in the cage to adding a nest box to removing the female and now it tells you to prepare for reproduction. And this is when you have a farm management software, it reduces the burden of you as an entrepreneur to keep track of things like time management and all that stuff. It, it literally crunches that up and makes it more processable for you. To get high yields, one must feed their animals well with the right foods drinks, follow the right timetable, and generally take good care of his money-making stream. Depending on your, um, the, the kind of uh, setting your farm is, um, how, how much real estate you have, I would recommend uh, growing your own feeds, making your own pellets, 
because you do save on more money in the long run. Like I said, this venture is a numbers game. You look at the, you look at um, the, the money you spent on feeds from month one to month six, only buying feeds. And you compare it to the money you spend in six months from you growing the feeds yourself and you making them yourself at the farm. And you can tell you save more than 70% of capital put in to buying feeds than making them. And um, the cost that the machine, the, how, the, the price of the machine would have varied because we didn't actually buy the machine as a whole finished product. We began from scratch and it's been taking us for a good three years now. We currently have a fitting schedule of morning, mid-afternoon, and then late night. We have um, readily available hay and pellets. So we feed them, so it varies. Uh, and was, like I said, we're all learning and um, we're trying different, we're, we're seeing how animals react as an individual to different feeding times. Uh, you go to someone, someone and say, oh, I feed my rabbits in the morning, pellets, hay, but like our farm, we've, we've, really, we've, we've, we've been through very many cycles, whereby we try in the morning, hay, evening pellets, nighttime, again, hay. Um, but we have come to a, a conclusion, but not fully concluded, but we've seen that rabbits yield higher meat, rabbits have a higher meat yield if they're fed in the morning hay, and then in the evening, put in a bit of pellets, and again at night time they have hay, whereby it's a, the ratio of, of hay to, to pellets is, is two to one. So you have more hay and one of the pellets. With water at our farm, we have to make sure rabbits readily have water at all times. Water is something, it's never, you cannot be without water. Um, our, we were able to pipe our whole house with water supply 24-7. Um, and water is also, I'll call it a trick for medication. Like, for example, a cow um, and a goat, you can easily inject it. They have more, um, they have bigger muscles and they're able to take injections, while rabbits, on the other hand, are very fragile animals. You can um, uh, give it an injection and this can lead to, you know, swellings that you don't know about. People don't know how to, how to medicate these animals. They haven't come up with certain technology that can handle these animals at their small uh, brutal sizes. We all start businesses with a main goal of making money, increasing on our incomes and revenues. How is this fact playing in Sharik's favor? This venture is profitable only if things are put into place. These things are management, hygiene, right breeders, and very, very excellent feeding. The reason why I've really, really put my, my emphasis on feeding is because feeding is the venture. If you can't feed your animals, you won't get a good meat yield. With no good meat yield, not profitable. We'll go for a short commercial break, and when we return, get to know what you need for the right structures and markets. Keep the comments coming through. Hashtag NTV Seeds of Gold. Welcome back from the break, glad you're still watching. Now, even with the best breeds of rabbits on the farm, but with poor structures, the yields might not be as expected. There are basics that must not be missed while constructing a rabbit structure. These structures are actually pretty expensive to set up, um, it de depending on what you use. But like we said, we want to eliminate the tunnel vision. We want to have structures that last longer and they're more durable and high quality. So the major, um, the major element in these structures is timber. Timber takes up about 80% of structure requirements and timber isn't very cheap. My dad was able to help me um, you know, provide some timber and I was able to put up all these structures that as you can see, the 15 or 20 structures we have. Um, but timber, making sure um, the, um, the mesh used is galvanized or is coated because the, the rabbit urine is very, very acidic um, and it can lead to rust of uh, these me metals. So I would recommend having a very high quality cage to last you longer and be more durable in the long. So we're looking at it as a long run. So you want to have more quality and longer durations of 
you know, like having, uh, having a cage that lasts longer, basically. Been wondering what else rabbits are good for apart from meat? Well, get ready to be in shock because the markets can't be compared. Value addition is that extra value added over and above the original value of a product or service. In this case, rabbit farming. What more is Sharik looking at on this farm than just rabbit meat? Um, so value addition is, in my terms, you have, you have a rabbit. You look at a rabbit as, as, as a mammal. The skill or the art of value addition is basically taking a rabbit as it is and making sure by the time your rabbit is from zero to month six, you have completely added value to this animal. If you have systems of management whereby you're able to, to yield, to have a high meat yield, a nice fur coat, um, you have uh, rabbit's urine being properly managed, uh, being, having a, a very, very good concentrate, water to urine, and having dried manure, um, at our farm, we actually do dry manure. We have a solar house, which solar house helps us in um, drying the feeds and drying the manure as well. And then we do also ferment the urine as well. Uh, we give it about uh, 30 days uh, to five. We give it. We give. We have 500 liters. We give it about 30 days to ferment, and we can sell it off. Um, and that's the art of value addition. We set up this greenhouse. It is made up of UV plastic which when enclosed, it attracts a heat of 85 degrees centigrade. So it helps the grass to dry up faster, such that we can continuously feed our rabbits on a daily, even when it rains. Yeah, so this is our screen house, and this is where we dry our pasture after collecting it from the field. Now, the pasture, the, what is regarded as weed in the crop sector, for us in rabbits, it's feed for the animals. So we dry it here, wilt it a bit, such that they don't get diseases when they eat, eat it when it's moist. So we use it for drying our pasture. Then we also use it to dry the manure when we collect it from the house. It dries up, then we pack it in the bags. Use some of it in our garden. There's a banana plantation. And the surplus, we pack it and sell it. A bag of rabbit manure goes for up to 50,000. 45,000 and 50,000. Yeah. Considering that literally everything on a rabbit is for selling, how easy or hard is it to penetrate the market? Have we as a country appreciated rabbit meat, for example? Where does Sharik get the market? The market is actually something that's a work in the progress. The market's there. Actually, the supply for rabbit meat isn't even close. It's satisfying the demand that the market does have. Um, although, again, rabbit tree is a numbers game. I can be farmer A, I have about 100 rabbits. I'm a fully unco incorporated uh, rabbit tree, and I get a contract for about 1,000 rabbits. I literally can't give up my farm. Even if I did have 1,000 rabbits, I cannot give up my farm, because if I sell all my, ra my rabbits, I have nothing to produce within the next month. So. In the coming few years, we're trying to introduce outbreeding, uh, whereby we have partners that we do, um, we're legally binded to, and we're able to know what they have on their farm at all times possible. Our farm management software, our FSI, is able to um, have a multi-farm management interface, whereby I, as farm A, can see what's on farm B and farm C's, and farm B and C can see what's at farm A. And if we do get a contract, we're, we're able to efficiently either decline or accept. Because like, like when contracts do come in, they give you a certain time to, and to give them feedback. And with this, with this efficiency of having the management software, you're able to actually give them quicker responses. With such enthusiasm of this young man, I got even more inquisitive to know exactly where he draws the energies, whether what he is studying is even connected to farming in a way. I find him a unique youth. So I do go to school in California and I'm doing data science and computer science as a double major. Um, but what I'm learning in data science more is that out there there's a lot of data in the world. Um, and what us as data scientists do is we get that data and combine it into more uh, readable and, and you know, and better analyzed data. Um, so what I'm learning right now is that 
as a farm, we have different things. We have breeders, we have feeds, we have finances, we have medications, that's all data. And once you're able to find a way of integrating this data, which is all complicated into a more readable and more understandable kind of data set, is what we fully push for. And this is why I'm applying my knowledge in CompSci and data science to now actually using that in, in agriculture in Uganda. Sharik is one of the few Ugandan youth that are offering employment to fellow youth. Amazing what these youngsters are doing on this farm. Plus, his first priority is given to youth from around his area. How thoughtful. As a farm, we've, we've been able to open up jobs for unemployed youth. Uh, we've been able to have small, I call them gigs, so full-time workers. We have about four, four full-time workers. And we have people that come on the side to do other work, uh, like preparing of, of, the, of, the, of the yards, of, the, uh, of the, the Nimilo and all that kind of stuff we have people who come as contractors to do some different work. And like I said, these are all youth. Um, the farm, the, the, where the where the farm is located in Kayabwe, we have, it's a, it has a very, very high rate of unemployment. And we, we plan by 2026 to eliminate at least half of the unemployment rate in this, in this area of Kayabwe. March as the farm is still in its young stage, Sharik has been able to register a few achievements. Farming is gold. On a segment of Expert Opinions today, we meet Dr. Victor Roy Morongi, the manager of vet services at Bukola Chemicals. He will be giving us tips on how to best rear rabbits. So Dr. Morongi, what are some of the diseases that most affect rabbits? Um, before we go to diseases, uh, we need to understand that uh, rabbits, just like any other animal, um, need proper management. Proper management, what do I mean? Um, the houses or the hatches for, the, for that matter, have got to be properly um, constructed, then um, the cleanliness has, has to be very, very perfect. Um, <coughs> some of the diseases you'll find in, a, in a rabbits, uh, you'll have uh, snuffles, or mm -hmm. in this case, uh, pasteurellosis or pneumonia. Yeah. You'll have ear canker caused by mites. Um, you'll have uh, hairballs that cause uh, swelling of the belly and um, you'll have so many other diseases. However, all these come from very, very bad management. If your management is not good, your hatches are not clean, you're not giving these animals proper feeding, then you're going to have a problem with rabbit uh, farming. Mm -hmm. I see. Inbreeding. Tell us a little bit more about inbreeding or other incest and how uh, can a farmer avoid it? Um, when uh, you have uh, the rabbits, um, it's, it's best that, um, well, you identify the sexes, that is the male and the female, and uh, we, uh, we advise that you get the, <coughs> the males, or rather the females, into separate hatches. So what would you say uh, is the initial capital for a small farm that is just starting up? Uh, give us an estimate um, in terms of turnover per, per, per year. Uh, now, we know that uh, rabbits, uh, really give birth so quickly. I'm talking 34 to 36 days mm -hmm. until uh, until they give birth from the time of conception. So um, initially, because you've got hatches, mm -hmm. you could start with two rabbits. Uh, a rabbit goes for as little as 50 to 60 thousand. So you might need 100, 120 thousand to get two rabbits, and then uh, construction of the hatch could cost you at about 200 thousand. So with 400,000, you're good to go because you're not going to really buy feeds. The rabbits eat any greens, most of the greens that are around us. In, I'm talking cabbages, I'm talking uh, yam leaves, I'm talking things like that. So with 400,000, you can start a rabbit farm. That's impressive, that's impressive. Mm. So the benefits of, of rearing rabbits? The, be the benefits of rearing rabbits is, like I said, short gestation period, what does that mean? It means you're going to have so many rabbits from two rabbits, you could have as many, I'm talking as many as 20 rabbits per six months. So every year you could have about 40 rabbits within one year, 40 rabbits. If you're selling each rabbit at uh, each adult rabbit for that matter, 
at uh, 50,000, you can do your mathematics. Thank you so much for your insight. Thank you. Next week, we'll be looking at post-harvest handling of coffee grown on a small scale. Till then, thank you for watching.